I know it took me a while to actually get to the place where I'm like ready to do a recap of how things in the field went today because there's a lot of my body really hurt when I got home. Like, um, it was only just a couple of days really, but even just a couple of days of not walking, um, it's like you have to build all the way back up again. So my muscles hurt, my joints hurt. Um, plus it was an eight hour shift. Normally, um, we don't have a lot of eight hour shifts for the most part. Like usually we're doing six hour shifts. Oh, my body hurts. Plus, you know, after you walk for so long and then you have to sit in a car for an hour plus, fortunately it was very light traffic tonight, so it only took me an hour to get home. But there, I mean, there was um, one Friday, it took me over two hours to get home. And after you've been walking and doing exercise like that, um, and then you have to sit still for an hour or more, it can really mess with your body. It can really mess up your joints. But I've been heating my hips, which helps. I've been heating my hips. So, interesting things from the trail today. We almost finished the entire turf, which is pretty huge because there was something like 270 houses on that turf. Some, it was a huge number and somehow we got through all but like less than 50 of the houses on that turf. So we had a really efficient process for walking today, which uh, worked really well for us. Like we kept rotating whether we were going to do odds and evens or do hop skip, hop, hopscotch. Um, we stayed close together the entire time. And by doing that, uh, not only were we hitting doors faster, but we were also able to socialize and, you know, um, work on building rapport throughout the shift, which is great. Uh, one thing that I really noticed, I know that, you know, I mentioned this the other day when the Omicron first started getting discussed, that the first California case and then there was one in, I think, um, Michigan or Wisconsin or so, I think it was Michigan is that if they've already started testing and getting results, then it's probably everywhere. And um, I mean, I can vouch that there are a lot of people, when I knock on doors, there are more and more people saying, I can't come to the door, I don't feel well. Or I can't come to the door, I have a sick child in the house. More and more of them are saying this. So I'm trying to find out, find like creative ways of still getting them to sign the petitions, um, if they, at least if they're a caregiver or, or if they feel like they have a light case of something going on. I've been working on like transfers of, all right, I'm going to set this down. I'm going to explain it to you and then I'm going to walk over here and then you pick it up, fill it out and then go back inside and I will go and pick it up. So that's what, that's how I'm trying to get around this now because I am still in open air all day. I'm, I'm masking every day. I have had three shots. Um, and I'm just trying to stay back. I'm trying to stay away, not get in a place where I'm breathing the same air as them. Um, it's scary, you guys. It's so scary. Uh, but it does seem to be working. Uh, I am not catching anything. Um, they feel more comfortable if I'm doing this transfer business with them. We did pretty well on our petitions today. And right before I got in the, like when we were wrapping up at like 7.15 to drive back to our meeting place to turn in our signatures, um, that was probably the only time on turf that we actually were like a block or so away from each other because um, my canvas partner, I got wrapped up at some doors and he was making more progress. So he actually like circled the block and went up a different direction. And then 
we both we texted each other and we're like okay it's time to go back to the car so we can get back to the park as i'm walking up the street where there's nobody nobody on the street it is completely dead silent right there's nobody there he's not there yet because he's around the corner um i saw a german sized german shepherd sized coyote silently trotting down the street um not making a sound but right like within like 30 feet of me and I just like stood still like stood next to a car and stood still and watched because I don't know how hungry they are <laughs> how hungry they are I wish I had gotten video of it but I was kind of just like trying to assess the situation and figure out if I walk away Will this coyote perceive that as trying to escape or, um, you know, fight or flight sort of bullshit? Um, because you never want to turn your back on a wild animal. Like, you never want to do this. But he definitely saw me. He was definitely keeping an eye on me. But I needed to walk in the opposite direction of from where he was. <laughs> I needed to be not near him. Um, so I did, um, I did um, call my canvas partner and I'm like, okay, there is literally a coyote trotting down the street right now and I'm here by myself. We, we did, like, I just waited a bit. I started basically walking backwards. So that, like, I could see what was behind me. Um, the only other, like, story that's coming to mind right now is, like, I knocked on this one door and it was, like, a 90-year-old woman who was deaf, pretty much deaf. She couldn't understand anything I said. So I stood back. I took my mask off so that she could see my lips. And I asked for the other person in the house that lived with her who I think was her son, maybe. Dude comes out. He's um, moving forward with signing the first petition, which is raise the minimum wage um, for hotel workers in Glendale, bring it up to the um, minimum wage that they're paying for hotel workers in Los Angeles and West Hollywood, match that rate. Give, give the maid staff panic buttons so that if they there's a high level of assault in that industry, if they run into un, any unruly guests and have a bad situation, they can hit a panic button and security will come. He starts filling out his lines when it's minimum wage. And then he said, what else is in this? And I explained the panic buttons and the overtime and stuff. And he freaked out the fuck out what is wrong with you dudes you seriously have a problem with protecting people from assault he freaked the fuck out not only did he freak the fuck out he must have been drinking he must have been drinking because he, he got like completely belligerent and slammed the door absolutely slammed the door and i think that's the only possible way this elderly lady can actually live with him is that she she's practically deaf because how I, I've never seen look I've had Republicans chase me down the street before <laughs> I have on at least twice when I was in Georgia but I have never seen somebody like that uh, get so scary right in front of me that guy um, had a meltdown for no fucking reason and you know what he was saying he was mad that we were going to um, better the lives of hotel workers when he felt like he didn't get that, like he didn't get that sort of representation. That I, I can't remember the exact word he said, but it was very much a jealousy thing. It was very much, I don't even get treated this way. I don't even get treated this good. Why am I going to help you? That was, that was what was coming out of his mouth. And he slammed that door hard. Um, 
I mean, I'd rather you slam the door and go back inside than actually like put me in a very threatening situation. But when you act volatile like that, I don't know. I don't know what kind of, like, I don't know what you're going to do next. You know, I'm a stranger and you acted like that to me kind of thing. You know what I'm saying? I'm a stranger and you acted like that to me. It's okay. Like, it's still even not even really that okay if you're just like being kind of rude and, and you're irritated that you got a, a knock on your door. But to actually start being physically violent right in front of me. Um, by throw, that's like the ascent, that's the equivalent of like throwing furniture around in front of a stranger. That's like the equivalent of that. I don't know what some people are thinking. I, all I can think is that the dude must have been drinking mm -hmm. and was being belligerent. That's all I can think.